Are you like me and wondering how Verizon grew their 5G coverage by like 5 million percent seemingly overnight? Well, investigator Sherry put her hat on. It's called dynamic spectrum sharing. Verizon debuted this technology at the 2020 Apple event. Now, initially I thought they were just saying we have 5G and it's nationwide, kind of like they've been saying this whole time. But as it turns out, it actually is nationwide now and not their 0.0014% they used to have. And today I'm telling you about DSS why it matters and why it will potentially slow down the 5G speeds you were looking forward to. If you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and turn on those notifications. Let me know what you want me to talk about, what videos you want to hear, and I'll be sure to publish them on Wednesdays and Fridays and talk about them live on Mondays. Okay, so what is DSS? Now I'm not gonna dive super deep into this tech. This is just gonna be simple DSS for dummies. Now dynamic spectrum sharing lets carriers like Verizon use their current technology and reprogram it for new technology. So basically Verizon is giving their 4G towers a software upgrade. So now those 4G towers spout out 5G. Now this isn't a perfect analogy, but think of it like your Instagram app. Sometimes there are new filters that come out and you can't use the filter until you upgrade the app. Verizon can't pump out 5G until they update their tower software and you can't use it until you upgrade your phone to a 5G phone. Now hypothetically, this is a real quick and easy way to get 5G nationwide, but there is a small catch. You know how after you've had a phone for a few years, sometimes the updates make your phone slower or you use your battery quicker or you just notice an overall general decline of function. Well, that's kind of what happens when DSS is applied to 4G servers. The speeds are faster than 4G, but they don't live up to the hype of typically expected 5G speeds. Maybe you want to call it 4.5G almost 5G or sub 5G, maybe 4G 2.0, you know, I don't really know. I don't have all the answers, but I do know that DSS puts the D in death of 5G. Now the point of 5G is to create mobile speeds that potentially reach one gig download speeds and allow us to do more than ever before on our cell phones, create less latency for gaming and have a smoother mobile experience overall. Now DSS will do that, but not to the degree that we're expecting. In fact, I'd be willing to bet many people won't notice a huge difference in their DSS 5G versus 4G LTE mobile experiences. But please prove me wrong. I love to be proven wrong in cases like this. So in that regard, DSS isn't going on my list of favorite things. It's not good or bad, it just is. It kind of reminds me of when AT&T said they had 5G, then they had to roll back their 5G claims, then renamed it 5GE. It's glorified 4G LTE. And fun fact, AT&T has been using DSS technology longer than Verizon. Another not great thing about DSS is that 4G and 5G customers will be sharing bandwidth because the tower will be sending out 4G and DSS 5G signals, making some users' networks more crowded, therefore potentially slower. Now Verizon says they've been planning for decreased bandwidth and have built more 4G towers, but We'll just have to wait and see how big of a problem it really ends up being. So who's using DSS? Every carrier has their own unique way in which they're rolling out 5G. Every one of them involves similar strategies. They all start with high band 5G in highly populated cities, use mid band and low band frequencies to fill out the rest of the United States. Now mid and low band frequencies travel the furthest, which is why T-Mobile, who has a 600 megahertz frequency, which is low frequency, is winning the 5G race. Verizon on the other hand was focusing on their high band frequency, which is super fast, but doesn't travel very far. Now they hold the title of fastest 5G. AT&T is somewhere in the middle, a little faster than T-Mobile, but not as much speed as Verizon. If you would have asked me two months ago who was the absolute winner in 5G, I would have said T-Mobile because they have the most for that category, and then I would have said Verizon is next because theirs is the fastest. But now the 5G race is really on. Everybody's neck and neck, trying to beat out everybody for everything. Now, as these change, as the coverage changes, as 5G gets faster and is expanded to more places, 
I will be sure to update you. Now I actually have an updated 5G Verizon video coming out on Friday. So if you wanna see that, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment and do all the things. I will be sure to update you on any other changes as they come through as well. I'm Sherry Riggs with Whistle Out TV.